So again, thanks for having me here today. I'm from the Minnesota Department of Commerce. My name's Marty Fleischacker. I was assistant commissioner of the department for five years. Before that, I was an investigator and I managed uh, an investigative team. We regulate lots of uh, industries at the Minnesota Department of Commerce. We had a change of administration and a uh, new position came, came open um, and now, uh, I, I go around and I, I, I talk to seniors and I, I still work with the investigators when, when uh, scams are reported to us. So I hear about people who have been victimized, attempted uh, attempts to victimize people, and people who have been victimized every week, unfortunately, in, in Minnesota. And you know, the, this every year it, it gets bigger and bigger. And so uh, more and more uh, people are, are, are trying to scam people. And it, it's, it's not only seniors, it's, it's also uh, or older Americans, older Minnesotans, but it, it, it's all ages. And, and millennials are actually scammed more, but they lose less because they don't have as much money. But, um, you know, if, if you want to really see what's going on, you can go to the ARPS website. They have something called the Fraud Watch, or you can go to the Better, Better Business Bureau. They have something called the Scam Tracker. And every day, people put in their information about attempts to that, that have been made to commit fraud or people who have uh, been victimized, who have lost money, they put their information in there. Um, I pulled a couple of examples off there just to give you an idea of some, some recent scams that were on there. And I just want to read a couple of you, uh, read a couple to you to give you an idea what, what people have reported. So this one says, uh, James Armstrong called and had me get hundreds of dollars of Amazon gift cards and give him the number to receive my win of $2.5 million. So he was supposed to win the lottery. Then I was to head to Walmart to send an additional $12.50 to them to get my win. The guy at Walmart said not to and gave me a list of scams. He saved me. The fact that this guy had some information from my interaction with Publishers Clearinghouse made it sound legit. Don't get scammed. My son yelled at me big time. So how much do you think this guy lost? Any guesses? He, he, he lost 375. He almost lost another 1250. Good, good guess though, it would have been over $2,000 or you know $1,500 had someone not stopped him. Another one, a little bit different. I was contacted by a friend and was told about a grant from the government. I didn't want to, but the friend kept bugging me for two days. To get the person off my back, I finally applied for the grant and have been sending cash and being harassed ever since. I have all conversations on my phone. So they applied for a grant and they paid a bunch of money to get the grant. They never got the grant. How much do you think this person lost? 21000 I got involved in chatting online with a woman. This is very common. Got involved chatting online with a woman who claimed to be from Wyoming. She said she was an only child and her late father had a gold inheritance in Nigeria. <laughs> yep, we've all gotten the emails, okay? She needed a next of kin to help her get the money. She talked to me, <clears throat> excuse me, she talked me into helping her as she seemed kind and honest. We want to deal with people who are kind and honest. She claimed to be a Christian in belief. She got me in contact with a supposed lawyer who needed money in the form of wiring money. After two months and a lot of money later to try to switch the address of the shipping the gold, I figured it out. The lawyer then kept emailing me, then calling and texting me. The lawyer claimed the FBI was contacted, and then I got an email from a fake FBI agent account uh, with a Gmail address. The fake agent, agent threatened me and my family. I'm still missing the money. He's out 24000 this is the last one. I just saw this a couple days ago. My sister got caught up in a romance scam. Found the love of her life. They had her send monies to a Canadian diplomat. Because of some box with money and gold in it, it was supposed to be dropped off. The list goes on and on for almost two years. In the end, they took her for, and they have an amount listed here, and she ended up taking her own life. Uh, my sister died because she fell in love with a man on the internet that scammed her. How much do you think she lost? $960,000. Oh. 
So, you know, this stuff is real, and people are, are taken by this stuff all, all the time. And I see these cases, and, you know, the two dollars $300,000 range is not out, of the, not out of the ordinary. And, um, you know, tens of thousands for sure. I see it all the time. But even the, the two dollars to $300,000 range, um, like I say, um, so you just you, you really need to be careful. We're good people in Minnesota. We're honest. We trust other people. But you have to ask a lot of questions, and you have to be vigilant in, 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 uh, at all times, especially when a stranger contacts you. So there, there are a couple things. When, when you go through these cases, there are really just a couple things that if these people or if you just do these couple things, so your chances of being a victim of a scam are almost nil, almost nil. If you, just, if you don't get anything else out of today, if you can just remember these things and tell all your friends, just if they come to you and they say they're going to do one of these things and you say, wait, I wouldn't do that, it's very unlikely they'll be uh, a victim of a scam. The first one is never send personal information by email or phone. People are contacted by the phone all the time and they, people say, can I verify your information? This is Social Security. This is the IRS. This is Medicare. Don't give it over the phone. People do. They get an email. This is Bank of America or this is Wells Fargo. We want to verify your account. Call Wells Fargo. Don't click on a link. Don't follow the, the phone number given in those emails. Call them directly. That's the only way you can guarantee you're talking to Wells Fargo. They, they don't contact you by email and ask you to give them money, uh, information over the phone. The government doesn't and, and uh, legitimate business won't do that. So call them directly if you have any questions. I know people get anxious. I get anxious. I think something bad is going on with an account of mine, but call them directly, and, and that's the way you'll, you'll be in touch directly with the company, and you won't be giving your information to somebody um, who shouldn't have it. Never answer the phone if you don't recognize the phone number. I don't anymore. I used to answer it. I would get the scam phone calls. Now that I don't answer it, the scam phone calls have dropped. If it's my mother, my father, my brother, I have their phone number in, in my uh, phone. I can see it's them. I answer those calls. But if it's a number I don't recognize, we used to tell people, hang up on, on fraud. You know, if somebody you, you, you don't know calls you, hang up on them. The problem that we found after talking to people is they say, I can't hang up on them. And, and I tell people, look, if you have them on the line, what, what I do is I start talking myself and I hang up on myself, okay? So I, I, you know, I can do that, and I know a lot of people who can do that. They can hang up on themselves, but it's hard to hang up on somebody else, and I, and I get that. So, you know, if you don't start the conversation, because these are going to be nice people you talk to. They are. They're very nice people. I know. I've talked to them, okay? I've talked to them. They're very nice people, and they're friendly. So... Our suggestion is don't answer the call if, if you don't recognize it. Never wire money. This is the big one. Never wire money. Send gift cards to somebody you haven't met in person. If somebody asks you to buy Bitcoin to send them money and you say, well, I wouldn't do that. Well, there are people who do that. These people are very good at convincing people to send money. And I have people who buy, uh, I've never bought an Apple iTunes card in my life. I don't even know what you do with an Apple iTunes card. But I have people who get scammed all the time of all ages who buy Apple cards and, and other companies, Best Buy and, and Nordstrom's and, and Walmart. And then they give the information to the scammer. They give them the codes. And then it's off to the races. They spend the money. Your, your money's gone. And, and, and that's it. <clears throat> the last thing. Safely store or shred all sensitive documents. You can make a mistake. If you have documents laying around, you don't need them, you can make a mistake. I've told people that I was visiting my parents in Florida, and I was at the grocery store, and I left the grocery store, and there was somebody who was moving out. This is 9 o'clock at night, 8.30, 9 o'clock at night, somebody moving out, and they put all this stuff in their driveway. So I pulled over and I asked the woman, I said, well, looks like you're setting up a garage sale at 9 o'clock at night. She said, it, it's all free, antiques and everything. It's all free. And, uh, and so I saw a box that was sitting there, and she walked away, and I opened the box, and it had all of her financial records, bank statements, investments, all that stuff. And she walked back out. I said, do you mean to put this out by the street? 
because this is a gold mine for, for people who engage in identity theft. And she said, oh my God, I made a mistake. I put an extra box out there that shouldn't have been there. So, you know, our suggestion is keep what you need, get a cross cutter, a, a, a shredder that cross cuts, not just the ribbon, the cross cut, or else, uh, you know, call your bank and ask them where you can bring your documents that you don't need so that somebody else can, uh, can shred them. So this is our mission at the Department of Commerce. Our mission is to uh, help consumers. My, my, my current role is to protect the public, advocate for consumers, and uh, serve as a trusted resource for Minnesotans. I get calls all the time. Uh, we have people who man the phone, man, woman, staff, I should say, the phones all the time. I brought some cards and I brought some brochures back there. The, uh, the, the cards are a little bookmark if you want to take those. Our, phone, our department's phone number is on there. So 8 to 4.30 every day. You can call about any of our uh, regulated industries. You can call for any type of help. And if we can't help you, we'll try to put you in touch with someone who can. We don't say, well, sorry, we just don't do that. We'll try to find some, some help. I was on that team for a while. And we get calls about, you, you name it, we get calls. And, and we try to help people. I uh, listed some of our major industries that we regulate at the Department of Commerce. Uh, again, I was an insurance investigator for uh, about half of my career at Commerce. I've been there over 20 years now. But um, we, we, as you can see, we regulate a, a lot of industries. Money transmitters, that's Western Union, PayPal, MoneyGram, uh, those types of businesses, the debt collectors, real estate appraisers. And uh, if you have questions about any of these uh, Issues, you have questions about reverse mortgages, give us a call. You have uh, questions about insurance or, or uh, whether somebody um, has complaints against them or we've taken administrative action, uh, give us a call about any of those industries and, and we'll help you. As you can see, a lot of major industries, the securities, uh, offerings, and agents, that, that's a, a huge one. We also have energy programs where we uh, distribute um, federal funds to to people who need help. So today, some of the things I'm going to talk about, we'll, we'll uh, just take a look at financial explo exploitation, how it's defined, uh, why, why are older adults, why are they really the focus of scammers, who are the perpetrators. I have a couple of true-false questions for you. I'll talk about some of the common scams that we've been seeing. Um, I'll, I'll give you another, uh, the prevention strategies I, I gave you, but I'll add to that list a little bit and then give you a couple suggestions what to do if you're a victim. And then I'll leave some time for questions at the end. So, the illegal or improper use of an older adult's funds, property, or assets. That's really a broad category. It doesn't matter if it's uh, somebody advertising to you that's being dishonest, deceptive, and they illegally get funds from you or improperly get funds through misrepresentation. They've engaged in uh, elder financial exploitation. If it's a loved one who's uh, improperly using your account or somebody who has a power of attorney, things like that, all those things are things that we investigate. We work with law enforcement. Our department has 17 licensed peace officers. Their main function is to investigate insurance fraud, but we have uh, uh, some of our, our law enforcement officers are deputized by um, two of them. One of them is deputized by the Postal Service and another one by Homeland Security. So we do work with the feds. We work with the FBI on some of our cases. We work with the uh, U.S. Attorney's Office a lot of times on our cases. The, 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 these crimes People think, well, you know, it's it, 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 one off this or one off that. Maybe uh, I've had people come to me and say, you know, th these criminals are are they just, you know, one person sitting at a computer in the Ukraine or maybe in uh, Costa Rica or Jamaica? Th these are organized crimes. Th these, we've traced out some of the money that's been scammed from people. We had one case that was two hundred and five thousand dollars. And uh, the money went all over the world. It was up and down California, it went to other states, went to China, went to some other countries. So this is organized crime, and it's big, big business. I'll talk in a few minutes about the numbers uh, of losses, the, the types of money uh, or the cumulative amount that people are losing every year. It's huge. It's big business. 
By 2050, over 20% of the population will be seniors. Yeah, so seniors are the target. How much, how much do older Americans lose to financial fraud annually? We don't know. A lot of times the frauds aren't reported to us. There are lots of reasons why people don't report the fraud to us. Um, in 2011, MetLife did a, a study and they, they used uh, a, a bunch of uh, data, uh, available data that they had on the internet, other, other data that was available, and they estimated it to be about $3 billion worth of losses every year. But TrueLink Financial in 2017 put out a report along with uh, Stanford's Center on Longevity, they calculated it to be closer to 36 or 37 billion a year. And, and the people I talk to in financial industries, they think that TrueLink's number is, is more accurate. They see fraud all the time. And, and it's, like I say, it's getting bigger and bigger. Uh, uh, bigger and bigger business. You know, it, it's estimated that only about one in nine to one in 44 cases are, are reported. So, you know, not, uh, and there, again, there are lots of reasons why people don't r report uh, that they've been a victim of fraud. And uh, it, I'd always encourage people to call the government, give us whatever information you can, whether it was attempted or whether the person was successful and and got some money from you or somebody you know so that we can put those pieces together, share them with, with the federal agents, and, and work to uh, shut down some of these crime rings. Over 42 million older Americans are victims of financial fraud every year. That, that's what the estimate is. Researchers have, have interviewed some of the victims and, and they found some similarities. People who are willing to listen to telemarketing calls, they, they're victimized more often. Having recently lost a spouse or partner and are suffering from so social isolation or are lonely. I see that a, a lot. When I'm talking to seniors, I think that the scammers focus on obituaries. I do, I think they look through the obituary and they, they contact those people. They tell them, I, I've seen victims who have been contacted about uh, their deceased spouse have an IRS bill or, or some other uh, debt that's outstanding that they want them to pay. And uh, it, it's unfortunate. Uh, so people, again, so, suffering from so, social isolation, that's a big group. People who are financially responsible for other members, people who have had a recent change in health, they've had difficulty managing their finances, or they run out of uh, money regularly at the end of the month and they're looking for a lifeline to try to fill those gaps. And, and it looks like a get-rich-quick scheme. And usually we know what happens when, when you have a get-rich-quick get scheme. I always say if people are offering you something for free, anytime they say to me, this is free, I say I can't afford it, I'm sorry. <laughs> because uh, it, nothing's free. I had a business for years. The business model where you give everything away and you don't expect something back, uh, isn't going to work. You're not going to be in business too long. So I always caution people about that. Why are older adults targeted? Well, we know one reason right off the bat. That's where the, that's where the money is. People have paid off homes. They have 401ks. They have Social Security. They have a retirement account. You know, and that, that's where the gold mine is for these, these scammers. They know that if they can uh, find, find seniors and they can get them motivated to you know, get out of their chair or, you know, um, whatever they're doing, stop at the bank, get the money and send it. That, that's where the gold is. Seniors are often retired at home and accessible. I had someone who, who's a senior uh, forward their phone to me. They were sick of answering it. So they forwarded their phone to me. Let me answer it. They forwarded it to my phone and I answered it. And that's how I know that these scammers are good. I, I got grandparent scams and I got a lot of tech scams. I got a lot of calls starting on Friday afternoon when government people stop working and all the way till Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening, they were calling like mad on, on the phone and they sounded good. They sounded convincing. I knew who they were, but I could see where people would be convinced that, you know, their Microsoft key, that's what they told me, your Microsoft key, your computer is going to be useless if you don't pay me and you don't do what I tell you to download stuff on your computer. 
I, you know, I, I obviously didn't do it, but I talked to them for a while. They transferred me to supervisors and all sorts of crazy things. Studies show that our aging brains make us more vulnerable to scams. As we age, we look for the study after study shows we look for the more positive things in, we li in life. We don't focus on the more negative things. And, and that's one thing that the scammers use to their advantage. They tell you about all these great things you're going to spend your money on. And, and uh, uh, you know, I uh, had a woman who said, you know, she'd been praying to God for years that she would have the money to distribute to people. And, you know, the scammer picked up on that, said, yes, this money will help you to be uh, real generous. Um, and, and unfortunately, uh, she lost a lot of money and never got anything back. Memory problems. We've had uh, victims who, unfortunately, the scams were, took place over a long period of time. They couldn't remember. They didn't make notes about what happened. And they didn't make very good witnesses. Well, the scammers know that, too. And it's unfortunate. I've had that with young people, too. But, you know, uh, that's one thing the scammers rely on. And lastly, uh, seniors, we find, are more polite and trusting. People I run into, um, you know, they're good people. And they expect other people to be good, and the scammers, uh, again, use that to their advantage. Statistics show that about 90% of abusers are family members or trusted others. It's unfortunate. Every month I, I get reports of, uh, from, from banks and other financial institutions. They, they send suspicious activity reports, and we get those at our department, and we comb through them, trying to find people in Minnesota that we can help. And I see month after month after month where a daughter or a son or some trusted person or a, um, uh, a niece or nephew are dipping into the, the uh, relative's account, and they don't know it. Maybe they signed a power of attorney. Maybe they're acting as a guardian. Or maybe they just put their name on their parents' account and said, hey, when you know th this will make it easier for me to pay the bills. But nobody's watching, so they spend the money, and they spend the money fast. And so, again, 90% of the abusers are, are family members or trusted others. We, we tell people, you know, if you have a financial advisor, it's best to go to your financial advisor and tell them before you start having any sort of memory problems or, or, or any other issues that you, you should give them a, 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 the name of a trusted person. And, and we encourage that, but just make sure that that's somebody you truly can trust. And sometimes it's better to maybe put a couple people uh, in, in charge uh, to be trusted people so they can keep track of each other and require each other to have a full accounting so that you do not become a, a victim. Mickey Rooney, you think, oh, he's a famous person. Well, he was victimized by, by somebody. So um, again, it's real, and, and we, we see it all the time. When we, when we talk to the, uh, the, the abuser, the son or the daughter, oftentimes we hear, well, it's my money anyway. I'm just spending my inheritance. No, it's not your inheritance. The person's living. It's not your inheritance till they give it to you, and you have no right to that money before that time period. And they start out small. They'll buy themselves a couple groceries. They'll you know, fill their tank of gas, and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So who are the perpetrators? We talked about family members. We've seen friends and neighbors, affinity groups. You meet a pastor, you, you meet somebody at uh, the Moose Club or the VFW, and, and uh, you become good friends with them, and they say, hey, I have this deal for you, 12% guaranteed investment. You can't lose. Well, that's when you need to be real careful. And they say, look, you can trust me. We're the same. We do this, these same types of activities. I wouldn't be here pitching this to you. Well, it's not true. We, we, we do see that happen all the time. Service providers, you know, caregivers. Um, most places would prevent caregivers from being named in wills and, and taking other gifts from you. I'd be really concerned about that if people are asking. Professionals, lawyers, doctors, uh, accountants, insurance people will be named on, on policy sometimes as a beneficiary. We have a lot of questions when that, when that occurs or if it's a financial advisor who's, who's helping you and all of a sudden their name ends up being a, a beneficiary. And then there's uh, strangers. That's the people who just call and, 
and want you to send them money, and they've got a good, good reason for it. I want to ask you a couple quick questions here and get what you think on these. Approximately 954 seniors are currently skipping meals as a result of financial abuse. Do you think that's true or false? True. That is true. Unfortunately, because of being victims, they don't have money to, to meet their bills. I personally know people who cannot meet their bills. They had a paid off house, they had money in the bank, they, had, they were debt free, they ran up their credit cards, they mortgaged their house, and they liquidated their 401k and gave it to scammers. I've seen it several times. And the people are broke, broke. Those perceived as most vulnerable, widows, the very old, people with severe memory loss are at the greatest risk for fraud. True, True. that's what I said. Unfortunately, you and I, we were both wrong. It's actually false. They lose money. The studies show it's the people who really think that they understand finances and, and that they're more used to moving money around and they're a little bit younger uh, seniors. They actually lose more than these other groups. I was surprised when I read that. I threw that that's why I threw that question in there because it got me too. Seniors described as extremely friendly lose four times as much to elder abuse, elder financial abuse. True or false? Yeah, that one's pretty pretty easy question. They talk to the fraudster when they call. They're friendly. They tell them a lot of their story, and then the fraudsters use their own information against them, and and uh, and it leads to a, a larger loss than than uh, on uh, what what would be an average loss. So. Before I went to law school, I graduated from law school, I was an undergraduate student and I, I uh, got a degree in marketing. So for me, one thing that amazed me was that these people, you know, Johnson & Johnson and all these companies spend millions of dollars every year and they can't motivate you to buy their product. But these people will motivate you to, to go to the bank, get money, and turn it into Bitcoin or wire money to somebody you've never met, ever. You might not even have talked to them, but for a very short period of time on the phone, maybe just exchanged emails with them. I see people who do this all the time. So for me, I started looking at how are these people, it's deceptive, I get it, deceptive marketing that legit companies can't do, but still, how do these people get you to do all these things. Well, one way is, you know, the Nigerian prince, or they act like a government official. And they, they, they say that they're from the IRS, they say they're from a governmental agency. You need to do this. And people say, oh, it's the government. It's somebody in authority. I better do it. And they do. I talk to uh, victims and they say, well, they said they were this. Okay. Well, they really weren't. But that's one way they get you motivated. The other is emotional. They tell you about, you know what, when you get this $2.5 million and the Mercedes I'm going to drop off because you want it, is all you have to do is pay the fees, so all you have to do is pay some uh, uh, other costs, and I'm going to get you all this money, and I'm going to get you this car, and it's going to be so nice, and you're going to have this financial freedom. Or, they have, or it's a romance scam, and they tell you about how they, you know, the, they love this person, and you're going to spend the rest of your life together. And it, it, it's motivating. You can, again, you can um, see how people uh, are, are able to, to, to and, and, you know, the, the romance scams are the most cruel because these people really believe, the victims really believe that this person is in, in love with them. And so, you know, those types of appeals uh, motivate people. And uh, I see very large losses in, in, in those types of uh, situations with the lottery and, and romance scams uh, particularly. Social validation, we talked about that a little bit. It's a little bit like uh, affinity fraud. You know, your neighbor down the street is doing this or, or this is a limit, limited time offer and all these other people are getting involved in this. You, you know, you better do it now. Social validation, they try to get you to understand that other people are doing it so it's right for you to do. Reciprocation. This is one of those things where, you know, people hand you stuff for free. You're walking down the street and they say, this is free. Well, right away you feel obligated. Well, they gave me something, I have to give some back. 
They give you three months free. Well, they gave me free, three months free on this website. Maybe I should buy it for a year. So that, that, that's another way. It would, they give you a little bit, and then you, they, they expect something back, and, and we feel obligated to give something back. Commitment. I see all the time where the, the scammers will get people committed. If they can get them, people committed, the victim committed to a small payment, it's usually 100 or $300, something like that. Like the one we talked about, uh, you know, and, uh, the person the next time was going to be 1250 and then it turns into 10000 and it turns into 20000 or $30,000 with each new story that they tell you. But if they can get you committed, then they can oftentimes get people to increase the amount that they send them um, until they're out of money. The victim's out of money. Trust. We, we, we like people that we trust, the people on the phone or, or uh, uh, on, uh, through the emails that you get. They seem like trusting people. You, you read, I read that one where they're a Christian. They're from Wyoming. Wyoming people are good. They're honest and decent. That's what they told you, but they're not. They're criminals. And then we all like to be flattered. Somebody says, you're beautiful. I've seen your picture. You look so young. You know, you this or that. And, and we like people who compliment us. And that's what the fraudsters do. I see the, the long emails that, that they send these, these victims, and they're very complimentary. And um, it, it helps to motivate people to send money. So how do, how do the scammers get to the victims? We see all these. Less in person and, and uh, TV and radio, but you know, by phone, email, and, and through the mail, we, we still see uh, quite a few quite a few of each uh, one of those uh, methods. And certain types of frauds go uh, work better, you know, depending on the, the, the way that they, they contact the person. So in-person scams, securities fraud. You know, you might meet with somebody, they say that they're, uh, they purport to be somebody that they're not. We had a, a, a person who uh, for years was an insurance agent and he had a whole list of clients. He did not have a securities license, but he ended up selling his clients about $16 million worth of products that he wasn't even licensed to sell, but he'd had these clients for years and he ended up gambling their money away and he ended up spending it at all the entertainment and when our officers caught up to him, he had about $16,000 left and he's in jail now, I think for 25 years, but most of the victims were seniors, the money's gone, it's all been spent, and there's no way to get it back, unfortunately. So uh, we, we, we do see, and the, and the people are always, uh, the, the perpetrators are always very nice. They seem very trusting. They have a great story, but they're fraudsters. Uh, lunch and dinner seminars. Again, they give you a free lunch, and sometimes people feel like they have to reciprocate. They have to buy a product from the person that they maybe don't need or they maybe don't, that, that's unsuitable, but sometimes it's also just plain fraudulent. Uh, building contractors, door to door. We see that after, after storms. People will knock on the door, say, hey, you have a, a tree on your roof or in your yard or you need this or that repair, and you know they'll, they'll get a payment. They either take off with that payment or they start the job, they get a payment from you, and then they... They take off. Uh, product sales, door-to-door -door salesmen. Uh, we've seen that for in, uh, you know insurance and other types of things. And uh, I heard about $2,000 vacuums people were selling where they had you finance the, the vacuum. I don't need a $2,000 vacuum. I heard that they take your vacuum after they sell the vacuum, sell you a vacuum so you can't back out of the deal. And then the, the last thing is, I, I know somebody who works at a bank and they told me that you know, every time you give somebody a check, people oftentimes don't fill out the whole check. They'll leave spaces. And so my banker friend said, remind people, fill in the whole space. If you leave a space at the front and it's a $50 check, they can write 100. You know, they can white out the name and they, or they can write 1100 and put a couple extra ones in there and they've, they've gotten a, a, a lot more money from you than uh, you had intended uh, to pay somebody. In my neighborhood, I live uh, by Mendota Heights and in our neighborhood, mail, uh, about every six months I hear about somebody losing mail. 
And, uh, you know, I'd never put up my little flag on my mailbox. Some people do, but I'd never put up a little flag and put a check in there because it's, you know, like waving a red flag that there's uh, a check in my mailbox. But, um, you know, be careful with that. That's what we would suggest. So we said 90% of the scammers, uh, people who engage in financial exploitation, are family members. So of that remaining 10%, 70% of the scams are over the phone. I, I don't know about you, but I get phone calls all the time, robocalls and, and other types of calls. I've gotten, on my own personal phone, the, the uh, grandparent scam, I've gotten the tech scam. Um, they wanted to sell me a warranty because my warranty on my car was running out. I don't have a warranty on my car. And uh, so it, it's always some story, but again, 70% um, are, are over the phone. What types of phone scams are we seeing? I just got a social security call last week and uh, the person sounded official. I gotta say, they sounded pretty official. I asked them a couple questions, they hung up on me and then their number didn't work anymore. So, uh, and I was recording them. So I do have the recording, but uh, around tax time, you get a lot of the IRS calls. Again, if somebody from the government ever calls you and said they need information, say thank you, hang up. And, and, and the, the only time that I ever get left messages, you know, I tell you don't answer the phone. Scammers typically, I find, don't leave a, a voicemail message. But the IRS scammers and the Social Security scammers, they have me, left me messages that I'm going to be arrested. I haven't been arrested yet, but they, 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 that is the one group that, that leaves those type of messages and they tell you to call back right away and uh, to discuss um, you know, the outstanding bills or, or the fact they're gonna cancel your social security number or something like that. So um, again, they're scam calls. Call the IRS or social security uh, directly. Tech support scams, I talked a little bit about that. Grandparent scams. You know, I still see victims all the time. People who are either victim, who have been victims, or or they know somebody who's been victimized. You know, just a couple of weeks ago, somebody got victimized and and told me about it. And I, you know, I think that a lot of people talk about that, but the, the, they're still out there. If they they contact you, it, it's not hard to do a little bit of research on, online and find out who all of you are are related to. If I have your name, your city, and and uh, I know your age, I can find out all the people off the internet in a few minutes who, who are related to you with their different ages and I can guess their grandsons or grand granddaughters and it's pretty easy or a lot of people will uh, answer the phone and say is this Billy and you know then they just act like uh, your grandson or whoever it is that you named and then uh, debt collectors we, we get a lot of calls about bogus debt collectors who are trying to collect debts you you don't know um, uh, yeah, it's, it's no particular time of the year either. They, 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 we get those complaints all year long. So these are the types of, of uh, scams that come by email. Lots and lots of lottery and fake charity scams. See it all the time. These are the, the big dollar losses that I see. When people think that they, they have won something from Publishers Clearinghouse and they don't call Publishers Clearinghouse, they believe whatever, they, whatever they're provided. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Phishing scams, where they send you an email, they ask you for information, people put it in, and then they're off to the races, uh, the scammers, especially if you give them your Social Security number. That's, that's the key right there. Social Security number, you can get the rest. I can get the rest online. I can figure out your birth date in no time flat. Your social security number is the hard one for the scammers to get. And once you give them the social security number, then, then they, you've given them the key to open up the, the identity fraud door. Online dating, that's another one. I, I know I talked about it, the romance scams, or, or else uh, the, the Facebook. My, my wife got one, uh, an email or something on Facebook from one of her friends saying, hey, I'm stuck over here in another country. Can you send me some money and help me out? Well, luckily, she called her, the, her friend, and friend said, no, I'm not in another country. I'm right here. Somebody's hacked into my Facebook. But we hear about those scams. Work and home scams, you, you, you hear about those where people will go to a legitimate website that advertises jobs, and they'll have shop, shop at home, and they'll give you some money to deposit. They'll give you a check to deposit, 
a cashier's check, it's a bogus check. It bounces eventually. But they tell the people to quick take that money and run over to Walmart because Walmart wants to know if you're, when you buy gift cards, whether they are really being nice when they sell them to you. That's what the claim is. And then you call up the fraudsters and they, they say, well, we just need the numbers on the back of those gift cards so we can report back to Walmart. And then you get to keep a certain amount of the money they gave you. Well, the check ends up bouncing. Now that you've given the gift card information to the scammers, they, they use your gift cards, you're out the money, and the check bounces, and then you have bounce check fees and inheritance scams. My own father got called on an, uh, on an inheritance scam and said there's somebody in Austria, where our family's from, Fleischhacker, meat cutter, somebody in Austria who has a big trunk of stuff, and we're, we're the long lost uh, relatives. Should I send them $300? No, no, do not send them $300. Tell them to open the trunk of all these valuable things. Tell them to sell something off, I said, and be very generous to themselves. Be gener generous. They got to box it up and ship you whatever's left. Well, he told them that, and that was the end of it. He never heard from them again. No surprise there. So I, I, I don't see as many of the TV radio scams. Uh, once in a while, we'll hear about some, some kind of bogus product, like a weight loss uh, type product um, you know, that doesn't work or, or something like that. A lot of that goes to the Better Business Bureau, but we send those things over to the uh, Attorney General's office. One thing about our department, if it's one of our regulated industries, I can walk into that business during regular business hours, and I can go right into their computer, I can go through their file cabinets, the law says I can go through their safe, no warrant needed, as long as it's one of our regulated industries. If it isn't one of our regulated industries, we refer it over to the Attorney General's office, they can file a lawsuit and they can pursue any um, consumer type complaint. So again, uh, call them, call us, and, and you know we work together too. Uh, to try to do the, the best thing and protect uh, Minnesotans. So when you're looking at the internet, there's lots of great stuff on the internet. And, and you, know, you can find all kinds of things. But again, it's one of those things where if you think you're going to get something for free, you better be very careful. Recently, I ran across this website. Get a grant. I talked a little bit in the beginning about somebody who lost 21000 to a grant. This is a company we found the website online. I found the website online. So I start looking through the, the website and they give grants. Supposedly there are these people who are uh, philanthropists and they give money to this company and then they distribute it to individuals. Well, if you know anything about grants, typically they don't give them to individuals. It'll be to a group, okay? Unless it's something like a student where you, uh, it's a, for a specific reason. This company, this is their, their office, at least that's what their website said. It's a fancy looking office building in Washington, D.C. And they do not discriminate. Individual, business, or, or a student, doesn't matter. Anybody can apply for these grants. So then I click to the next page, and this is the board of directors. Well, wait a minute, I recognize one of those guys. The first one was uh, one of our deputy commissioners. Notice there's no names on there. They stole our pictures. They stole my picture off of our website at the Department of Commerce and put it on here. A woman uh, on the upper right is from Montana. Uh, she ran, uh, was associated with an agency there. The guy down in the bottom left is a former FBI agent who runs all of Disney's security. The guy in the middle at the bottom there, he's a Chinese billionaire. And so they purport that these are the, the board of directors. So the reason that I, I show you that is, you know, just be, be careful and always uh, be vigilant and, and, and do some further research. What we found was this company had scammed one person uh, out of, I think it was $13,000 in Maryland. They had paid a bunch of application fees and other costs to get the grant that they were never going to get. And we heard about other people as well who had paid fees to this company. And it took us several weeks for our law enforcement officers to get this shut down. This was only a couple months ago that we, we ran across this. And, and I took my picture and I just re reverse Googled it and 
that's how I ran across this website. I found my picture on somebody's website. And said, what is this? And uh, again, it took us about four to six weeks to take this uh, website down. So if you have any questions about something and if it seems too good to be true, contact somebody and ask more questions. The Attorney General's office, they regulate the, the charities. You can always call them to ask because some scam charities, they'll use names that sound familiar and, and real close, but it'll have a different address or different phone number. Uh, so, you know, call somebody, call me, call our department. I've got, uh, like I say, the brochures and, and our phone number back there and we'll help you find out if it's legitimate. We, we encourage people to, to donate. Minnesotans are very, very generous, but we just wanna make sure the money's going to a legitimate purpose and not somebody who's gonna be engaged in uh, uh, other crimes or, or terrorism. So what, what, are, what do I see when I talk to, to victims? Their money's gone. It's gone. Usually ends up some in America, and then the rest is the vast majority is transferred to to some other country when it's the big losses. That's what I found. Uh, victims suffer uh, depression, feelings of hopelessness, and impossible suicide. I had one person that we were talking to who was suicidal. We I don't have the skill set for that. I had to transfer that person to somebody else, so um, they they could talk to them and and help them. But, uh, you know, you, you lose money, you, f you feel stupid, but these people are very, very good, these scammers. And, uh, you know, you lose trust in others. Some people who, who have given away all their money to the scammer, they, they lose their, their independence. They don't have the, the money to pay their bills. We talked about that. And they, they sometimes don't have the money to pay their, their rent. They have to go on uh, some sort of government assistance. And... Uh, and we talked about foregoing medical treatments or, or, or medications. Don't answer the phone if you, you don't recognize the number. Never give personal information. Shred all receipts and safely store documents. I can't, you know, uh, uh, again, I, I keep repeating those because if you do those things, you're, you're really not going to be, uh, it, it's unlikely you're going to be a victim of fraud. And then sign up for the do not call. I'm signed up for the do not call, but I still get calls. And people say, Marty, it doesn't do any good. I still get the calls. Yeah, it does. It is a good thing because then I know that the people who don't abide by federal law and check that do not call list, I know those are, are companies that don't abide by the law and I shouldn't be talking to them. I shouldn't be dealing with them. And that's why I encourage people to always sign up for the do not call list. You know, we, uh, some people say, well, I'm going to play with this scammer for a while. Well, those, the scammers are really good. I, my suggestion is, and the other thing is they sell these lists. And, and any time you respond to a phone call or you respond to emails, you know, they check it off and, and, and then your, your name's worth more to the, the next people who are going to buy that list down the road. If you don't answer the phone, they don't uh, get a connection, then I, I, I found, like I say, that I get less phone calls when I, when I don't answer uh, numbers that I, that I don't recognize. Use direct deposit so you're not getting checks in the mail. So if your mail gets stolen, like in my neighborhood sometimes, you're not going to lose that check. You're not going to have to go through the hassle of, uh, of, of um, trying to correct what, what's happened. Never I, I know I mentioned this, but I just want to repeat it, that never log into a website you see in an email. Don't click on that email and think you're going necessarily to Social Security. You know, I've called some of the numbers that the scammers give me, and they sound legitimate. But it's not Social Security. It's not the IRS. It's not who they purport to be. And, and they're, they're good at sounding like a, a, a government agency. So look up the number yourself, look up the website yourself, and then click on it and and go to get legitimate information. If you do end up becoming a victim, call your bank or credit card company right away. I've had my credit card hacked two times. Uh, one time I was in Florida and they called, my bank called me and said, are you on vacation? I said, yes, I am. They said, okay, we just wanted to verify it. I said, whoa, wait a minute. Where do you think I am? And they said, well, you're in London. You just bought tires for a car and some movie tickets. I said, no, I'm not. I mean, Fort Myers at my parents, so they, they shut it down, but the person had uh, uh, charged several hundred dollars on my card. I wasn't responsible for it. Cancel any debit card or credit card linked to a stolen account. Have them reopen it. Doesn't take long at all. Uh, 
Reset your personal identification numbers. Uh, and, and one thing that, that I, I don't even do enough is you really need to you know, reset your password and don't use that same password for all of the websites that, that you go to. I, I, I know that people do that sometimes, but then if they get one um, password, you can, you can go on the internet and you can find sites that will look at the dark net. And you can put your, all you, gotta do is all you have to do is Google it. And you, you can put your email address in there. And it'll say, it'll do searches to find out if your email address or whatever you log into that's personal shows up on the dark net. And whether there are, are people who have access to your password. Somehow they hacked into it. Somehow they got that information from you. I've done it myself. Two of my email addresses, personal ones, were, were on the dark net. So, um... You know, if you, you want to know how to do that, just give me a call uh, at the office and, and uh, we, we can talk about how to do that. Contact the police, Adult Protective Services. If you don't want to tell anybody else, at least tell us, tell the police about attempts or if you become a victim because we take all those little pieces of information and we try to pass them up the line to we either try to do something ourselves, but if it's bigger, it's international, we have to pass it off to the feds, but each one of those little pieces of information help bust up these, these uh, rings of, of scammers. So I wanna end where I, where I began. So again, if you do these things, please do them and your chances of, of you and I having any kind of discussion about you losing money are, are virtually nil. And with that, I'm finished. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them.